Hey kids, this is Mr. H. Welcome to this week's video of Best Brains series of incredible children. Today we're going to be looking at Joan of Arc and the world around them. Before continuing, make sure to download the worksheet from the link in the description below. Born Jeanne d'Arc in 1412, her parents uh, were farmers living in the Duchy of Bar in France. They had a moderate size of land, roughly 50 acres, and her father was a local tax collector for her village. When she was 13 years old, she had a vision where she was visited by three angelic figures, St. Michael, St. Catherine, and St. Margaret. They told her to drive the English out of France. Now, obvious question here, why did she have to drive the English out of France? For about 75 years prior to her birth, a conflict had been raging, or a series of conflicts had been raging, between two nobles' houses in France and the Kingdom of England. It would later become known as the Hundred Years' War, and it was one of the most devastating conflicts to have ever occurred on this earth. Now, at this point in the war, things are not going well for the Kingdom of France. Their morale is very low, and the English and their French allies have laid siege to the city of Orleans in hopes of being able to crush the resisting forces of the Kingdom of France once and for all and bring an end to the war. It's here where Joan enters the picture. Now, Joan had been able to predict the outcome of battle that took place near Orleans several days before news about it reached the royal court, which was a big surprise to those who knew about her prediction. She used this information and the fact that she was able to predict it correctly to earn her a meeting with the King of France, Charles VII. Now, in order to get to Charles VII, she had to cross through enemy territory that was occupied by French who were loyal to the English. Uh, she did have an escort, but she took an additional precaution of disguising herself as a man, which wasn't unheard of at the time if you're a young woman traveling through just country in general. However, in her case, it would come back to bite her later on. Joan persuaded the very desperate Charles VII to equip her for war and to also place her at the head of an army that was meant to relieve the siege of Orleans, which for a 13-year-old girl was both crazy and unheard of. Now, you're probably wondering, how is it that Charles thought it was a good idea to give a 13-year-old girl power over an army and send her off to war, where she would most certainly die? For years prior, there had been all these vague predictions floating around about an armored maiden who would save France. Now, a couple details here give Joan credence. The prophecy stated that this armored maiden would stem from the same area Joan was born in, and add that in with the fact that she had made a correct prediction about a battle near Orleans and her apparent visions, and Charles, who was desperate to find a way to win at this point, really couldn't afford to turn this apparent miracle away. Now, Joan arrived with her army at the Siege of Orleans, and in nine days, brought it to an end. And that siege had been going on for six months. Now, this stunning reversal of fortunes for the French kingdom um, really changed everything for them. At this point, they were basically about to lose the war, but after this reversal of the siege at Orleans, they would actually go on to win the war. After lifting the siege at Orleans, Joan was captured by French loyalists who were, again, loyal to England. She was put into an English court and put on trial for several different crimes, including cross-dressing as a man, remember she had disguised herself as a man to go meet with Charles, and heresy, or taking the Lord's name in vain, or pretending to speak on his behalf. Now, when it came to the charge of heresy, the court tried to verbally entrap her, banking on her illiteracy and her general lack of education. They asked her if she was in God's graces. Now, when Joan was asked that question, she replied, If I am not, may God put me there. If I am, may God so keep me. I should be the saddest creature in the world if I knew I were not in his grace. Now, according to eyewitnesses, this left her interrogators absolutely stupefied because she's illiterate. They didn't think she was going to be able to come up with something so incredibly nuanced and deep like that. And it gave her the perfect out. She did not admit to being in his grace, and she basically played it off as though, I'm just a simple person. 
I don't know if I'm in his grace. I sure hope I am. Sadly, despite her incredibly well-worded defense, she was found guilty for her crimes and summarily executed. Joan of Arc's immediate impact on history was turning the tide of the Siege of Orleans, and in doing so, turning the tide of the war. Were it not for her, many historians agreed that the Siege of Orleans would have been lost, and it would have led to the defeat of Charles in the Kingdom of France. Her further impacts on history wouldn't be seen until about 20 years after her death, when Pope Calixtus III debunked all charges against her, pronounced her innocent, and declared her a martyr, or uh, that is to say, hero of Christianity. Two centuries later, she would be declared a symbol of the Catholic League of France, a national symbol of France two centuries after that, and eventually she would be declared a patron saint of France itself. Joan of Arc represents one of the first real cases of women challenging the status quo. For a woman, never mind a 13-year-old girl, to lead a military campaign in one of the bloodiest conflicts of history is unheard of, and it's still a rare sight to this day. Yet, despite the risks, despite the uh, challenges, the adversities, and the male-dominated status quo of the time period, she remained steadfast and brave in her decisions, even when those decisions would ultimately lead to her death at the hands of those who refused to accept that she had done anything like that. And she did all of this, um, despite being illiterate and coming from a family of farmers and peasants, basically. Now, in today's age, you guys are way, way better equipped for things than she was. And that means that for you guys, there's no limit to what you can achieve. There is nothing stopping you from doing whatever you want. The only limitation you guys have is your imagination. Thanks for watching this week's video. I hope you guys learned something interesting. Be sure to tune in next week for our video on Luis Braille. Until next time, bye kids.